Hi, my name is Joe. Welcome to my shop. This is the Three Phase Liberty Bunker. Today I want to talk about why that machine, the Bridgeport Vertical Milling Machine, why I think that is a great choice for frame builders in a small space who want uh, some sort of milling machine. And uh, you know, there's a lot of options out there. That's probably the most popular. I want to talk about why I think that's a great starting place. Let's get into it. Here it is. So I got this baby in 2015, that'd be a little over three years ago, and this has been transformational for me. Now I, you know, I'm starting a tooling business. I'm making bike frame building tooling. So especially I love the milling machine because I wanted to make my own tools, and I found that that was very satisfying. But what I've also found is that I think that if you're a frame builder in a small space, you need to maximize the square footage that you have because I know a lot of frame builders are starting in their garage or in a rented space in a city where square footage on your floor is a premium. Now you can get a smaller milling machine that takes up even less space, but I think that this is worth the space that it takes up. I have mine backed into a corner on a 45 degree angle and uh, I remember seeing a chart once that said you want to have about a 7 foot by 7 foot square in the corner where you're going to put it. And I think that it takes up less space than that. You just want to have access to that amount of space. So if you're putting a bench, leave a little bit of space. If you're going to uh, put another machine behind it or, or cabinets or something, you know, maybe you're not using the machine all the time and you can put a trash can right here most of the time and you can just move it out of the way when you're actually running the machine. They don't take up a ton of space. Another thing is that they have three-phase motors, and people get kind of uh, concerned about that. How am I going to power the machine, right? I don't have three-phase service here. Well, actually, for like $100 or $200 starting price, you can get a, uh, a uh, what's it called? It's called a VFD, a variable frequency drive. So it's another box that you wire in, and there's all sorts of YouTube videos that teach you how to install them, but it replaces this simple uh, off, forward, and reverse switch. You replace that hard switch with, uh, with a, a box and now you have controls and it allows you not only to run it off of single phase power, and you don't need a whole lot of power to run these, this is a one horsepower motor, um, but also uh, it gives you variable speed. So I have this step pulley head and I have to actually physically move the belt up and down, which takes a couple seconds. And when you install a VFD, not only can you run off single phase, but you have a speed control knob and you can actually vary the speed of the motor, which is a pretty slick fit feature. So if you're not in a shop with three phase power like I am, uh, then it's actually a pretty simple fix. Also, I think some people get concerned about moving these machines, and certainly it can be a big task if you have to move it up or down a flight of stairs, if you have a steep driveway, that sort of thing. But I think a lot of people actually have a space they're not that hard to move into. So what I did was, when I found this machine, uh, I came with uh, some pry bars and some uh, dimensional lumber and deck screws, and we actually jacked up the machine a little bit in the front and we put some shims under it and a little bit in the back. The machine weighs 2,000 pounds, but when you get a pry bar, you don't actually have to push that hard to lift one side of it half of an inch. And so you slowly and carefully, methodically, lift the machine up bit by bit until it's about five inches off the ground with some blocks under it. And then, carefully, you can build a pallet underneath it and you can use a pallet jack. I have mine under the machine just for storage to get it out of the way because I have a small shop. You can understand. And you roll the pallet jack under, and now these are rated for 5,500 pounds, which is more than double the weight of the machine, and you can just roll the machine around the shop. So after I got my machine home, I eventually built a stand for it, which lifts it up. I'm six feet tall, and I like having the machine lifted up a little bit. I also have uh, adjustable feet underneath it, so I can get it leveled and sitting flat on the floor, regardless of whether or not the floor is totally flat. So I don't think moving the machine is that hard. I don't think powering the machine is that hard. And though it does take up some floor space, I, I think it's worth it to a lot of people who have the floor space. And the reason that I think it's worth it is because this machine, uh, more than a lot of other manual milling machines, I think is a really valuable package. So what do I mean by that? Uh, a lot of people, bike frame builders, like to use a horizontal milling machine where rather than having a spindle uh, that comes from above and spins in this attitude, it actually comes toward the table in this direction. And so that can be really nice for dedicated mitering setups. And some of those small horizontal mills end up being a smaller package than the bridge port. They're not quite as big. The table is not quite as large. And so you can fit them close together. The reason that I'm not so gung-ho about those, if you do have a small shop, is that each horizontal milling machine is really only useful for a dedicated setup. 
you can get a lot done on them if you spend enough time, but they're just really kind of tedious for a lot of the average projects that you might find yourself doing, and they're not always the best for multiple setups on the same machine. What I like about a bridge port is that if you mount a six inch milling vise like this one on the table, you can put all sorts of things into the milling vise. If you need to make some sort of custom quick fixture, even if you're a novice machinist, you can probably get it done in this vise pretty easily. You can also put these tubing blocks. If you're gonna miter your tubes out of tubing blocks, you can set them right in the vise. You can also put the miter buddy in there. You can also put in uh, you know, all sorts of tools. I think uh, the anvil and Sputnik chainstay mitering fixtures and seat stay mitering fixtures. Well, maybe not the Sputnik seat stay mitering fixture, but a lot of them can be held just right in the vise. And uh, if you're gonna use the machine as a drill press, I like to keep, this is a drill chuck, a keyless Albrecht made in Germany drill, drill chuck, and I love this. And I keep this right next to it so that I can put it in the spindle, and now if I want to hold twist drills or uh, you know chamfering bits or whatever, I can just treat this like a, an amazing, uh, very rigid and heavy-duty drill press. And so for drilling water bottle holes and that sort of thing, it's ready to go. And so I just think it's, uh, it's a really versatile machine. Having the, the spindle vertical like this allows you to use it as a drill press, but also it gives you a bigger work envelope with a horizontal mill. Horizontal mills are really good for like heavy hogging, but uh, you just, uh, the work, it's it just, it's more awkward for a lot of your general purpose setups. This machine was developed by Bridgeport in, uh, I don't know, the 40s into the 50s, and it really, uh, this design, as you see it, was pretty much finalized in the 50s, I think, and they sold so many of these, and they sold such a good design that they went out of business after like 40 or 50 years, because, uh, this is as I understand it, because they made a machine so good that it didn't really need to be improved that much, and that eventually other companies were producing the same machine to the same quality standard and cheaper, and they couldn't compete, and they, they didn't get into the game. This is actually also made by Bridgeport. They didn't start making CNC machines until a little bit too late. Uh, their offerings were you know, not really competitive in that market, and so they actually went out of business because they made too good of a machine without changing it, because it, for so long it didn't really need to be changed. It's not the most rigid milling machine, it's not the, the, you know, the most horsepower. It's a, it can't do everything under the sun. It's not the most feature rich, but it's got it where it counts for your general purpose machining. And that's why you go into almost any machine shop or uh, you know, a lot of automotive shops, a lot of different welding shops, you'll see this machine sitting in there because you can move the ram in and out. You can tilt the head. You can raise and lower the table. If you need to, you can, you can have a long piece of work bolted to the front of the table and you can machine the end of it. You can set this up for all different kinds of things and it's really versatile. So if you're a frame builder and you have a small shop and you want to get one milling machine and that's all the space you have, I think this is totally worth it because you can use it for such a wide variety of things. Uh, and, and not only that, but I think it works pretty well actually for mitering bike tubes too. Some of the things that I like about this machine are uh, once you get it and you get it set up and it costs you however much money, you get it set down, you can start using it. But uh, maybe it came with a vise that you're not happy with. You can replace the vise later. The machine doesn't take up any more floor space. Let's say you're using it a lot and you would like to have some convenience features. This is a power feed for the x-axis. And now I don't need to feed it across or if I want to move it quickly, it's all in there. This is a you know, $300 upgrade. It doesn't add any space to the, uh, the footprint of the machine. It's a nice feature you can add in later, conveniently. This is a digital readout, and this I think is the most important upgrade that you can get because it, it adds some precision to the machine, but it just really adds user friendliness. You can very quickly get on the center line of a tube. You can very quickly move over 65 millimeters for your water bottle spacing if you're drilling water bottle holes. There's all sorts of things that you can do with this because you have a, a glass scale on the y-axis and the x-axis and as you crank the handle it tells you exactly how far you've moved to within two ten thousandths of an inch. You can zero around whatever you want and crank a little bit and now you know how far you've moved. You can even tell it right now I'm at 5.5 inches and when I crank it tells me how much further I've moved it's just incredibly useful. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with one of these. You can change it from inch to metric. You know, otherwise you're using the graduation on the hand dials, which works 
but it's just very tedious and you can't convert to millimeters and there's backlash in the screws so you have to always crank up to your number in the same direction. It's very slow by comparison. Another add-on that I like is to put this uh, a half inch drill with this castellated uh, tool on here and that lines up with the spline for the knee and now I can lower or I can raise the table very quickly. If you don't have that you're stuck turning a hand crank and it's a tenth of an inch per revolution. That means that the table lifts very slowly and it's a lot of work if you need to move more than an inch or so. Uh, another add-on that I like on this machine is the quill digital readout. So this does the x-axis and the y-axis over here, but uh, sometimes you want to know how far you're moving in this direction so you can set whatever depth you need and then lock this, the quill. And I think this is the way to go. This was uh, another $250 add-on, something like that. It's really, uh, what I'm trying to get at is that with this machine, you buy it, you get it set down, you put it to work, and then over time you can upgrade it. And you don't need to get a whole new machine. You don't need to keep moving your machine. And by the time you get all these kinds of upgrades, the nice vice and the power feeds, the digital readout, it becomes a really slick machine for around the shop, general purpose stuff. You can really get things done pretty quickly and effectively uh, with a machine like this. Another valuable feature of this is that it has a power down feed. So right now I have a hole saw on here like you would usually have if you're mitering tubes. And now you turn on the spindle, and when you engage the power down feed, now with every revolution of the spindle, it's moving down. It's making the cut for you. And if you have one of these, you clip it in here, and it'll kick itself off when it gets to the bottom of the stroke. You can set that up wherever, and so if you're making mitering cuts, you just start your cut, you engage the power down feed, it's cutting now, you walk away, and you grab your next tube, and you mark it. I think that's a really valuable feature that not every milling machine has, but just about every Bridgeport has that. One more thing is that, uh, you know, I have, I made this rack shortly after I got the machine, and so I have my machining calculator, my calipers, my drill chuck, all the collets that go up into the spindle, I got some more hole saws, slitting saw, fly cutter, all these things, this is a T-slot cleaner, right? All this stuff right here is within arm's reach, and this is like the most commonly used stuff. I also have this wrench here which you use on the draw bar and so when you go to remove a tool from the spindle you hit the spindle brake and then you put this up on the hex you have to loosen this nut and once it's loose you have to tap it with a hammer well I just had a piece of brass guess where I drilled these holes on the bridge port right and so I put this piece of brass on here and uh, and now I can whack the end of that and I'm not going to mushroom over the head of this hex because this is a softer metal. So I put my hand on the tool and now my, my tool is freed up and I can swap it out. And so just having this sitting right here on the machine keeps it right within arm's reach. And I, I like to have that with as many things as possible. Here we have an indicator holder if I need to indicate something in. I have a bunch of random end mills, taps, drills, all the stuff that I'm regularly using, uh, toe clamps and straps. These here allow you to hold awkward stuff that you can't get into the vise. The T-nuts go down into the T-slots here on the table, and now you have an anchor point where you can clamp things to this nice flat table. And so if you have you know, big pieces that you want to you know, drill holes or machine the edge, there's, there's ways to hold it on here. So I just like to set up the whole area with some thoughtfulness about what are you doing most commonly. And uh, when you have it set up, man, you can really, uh, you can get stuff done pretty quickly on this, you know, little odd jobs and tasks. So if you live anywhere on the East Coast of the United States, anywhere near Boston or Connecticut especially, but a lot of places out East, you're going to find these kinds of machines real cheap on Craigslist and eBay, not very far from you. You might find a machine like this for $1,000, maybe less, maybe closer to $2,000, depending on the features and the condition. And that's not bad for a machine that's transformationally useful in your shop, right? You can rent a trailer, you can get some friends, buy a rent a pallet jack, you can get it moved into your shop, set down, wired up, and put it to work pretty quickly, and that's a good value. 
If you live on the West Coast, uh, my understanding is these things uh, were never really that popular in industry to the degree that they were in the Midwest and especially out East. And so finding them, I think, is more difficult for the same kind of price, but still a worthy machine, still worth getting. You just probably have to work a little bit harder to find one locally or pay a little bit more when you do find it. Really though, uh, you know, if you live on the East Coast, there's, there's no excuse for not finding one of these babies and not putting it to work for you. Thanks for hanging out in my shop. I want to do more videos involving the Bridgeport and I'm sure I will. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you around.